Good morning and welcome to another Child of the Week Assembly. I did wonder whether I would be able to do the recording this week because my computer has been uh, playing up, but it's now sorted, so I'm glad to be with you. We begin with our liturgy. In the beginning, when God created all things, he said, let there be light, and there was light. Let your light shine. God is light and in him there is no darkness. Let your light shine. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Let your light shine. Oh, I wonder if you can remember what our assembly was about last week. And uh, I've used that word remember because uh, we learnt a little um, poem. Uh, remember, remember the 5th of November. And now a week on, I've got uh, another image here that says, lest we forget. It's telling us again that we need to remember something. I wonder if you know what these poppies here are, uh, are there for. What are they signifying? So some of you might have been able to share with your, uh, your class uh, what it is that we're remembering next Sunday. If you haven't had a chance, then maybe stop the video now and, uh, and share that. The real day that, uh, that is important is the 11th of November. And the 11th of November is actually on Thursday. But uh, we are remembering specially on Sunday. And uh, you can see some of these lovely displays of poppies that are around the school, thanks to Mrs. Lawrence, who uh, took this the other morning with the sun shining. It's beautiful. And I wanted to say a big thank you to Mrs. Hartson and to Mrs. Pegg, who spent time in their holidays planting these poppy sticks and uh, spraying all these poppies and doing these displays for us so that we can really um, recognise the importance of this celebration. Now I've used the word celebration just there deliberately. So actually we're not celebrating anything. Celebration is too positive a word. Actually we are commemorating. It's about remembrance and the word is commemorate. It's about remembering all of those who have died, fought and died in different wars. And so we have Remembrance Day parades and uh, if you want to join us as school uh, in the parade in Winslow then be down at the uh, Legion, Royal Legion uh, car park on Sunday at half past 10, and we'll be uh, marching with all of the uniformed organizations to go down to by the church and uh, where we're going to lay a wreath. There will be brass bands marching with us. We'll hold a two minute silence and remember the soldiers who gave their lives. We'll be wearing poppies, and you'll see that uh, I have made a mistake in my spelling there on this, uh, I've, I've typed too quickly and missed a letter. I wonder if anybody can uh, share what the correct spelling should be. We'll be laying poppy wreaths and uh, it may be that Mrs. Mannering will play the last post again. A bit uh, earlier in the week, there will be a festival of remembrance attended by the Queen that will be on the television all different ways that we commemorate this important day. We're going to think a little bit about different parts of this commemoration during the week, but uh, focusing today on poppies. Why do we wear the poppies? I'm going to play a video from YouTube. Uh, it's a video of a poem that is very famous. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow. 
written by John McRae, who was a soldier and who, who wrote this over a hundred years ago, May 1915. Uh, it's a traditional, quite formal poem. Uh, the language is quite difficult to understand, but uh, we show our respect uh, as we listen to it. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. That mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. Flanders was an area of Belgium that was known for really fierce fighting in World War I. And in the field where battles had taken place, soldiers had been killed, the bright red flower of a poppy could be seen growing in large numbers. Lieutenant Colonel John McRae was a soldier in the Canadian Army, a doctor, and he noticed the poems and he wrote that poem that we just heard. The poem was published in an English magazine in uh, England called The Punch in December 1915. And so much else has happened since that poem was written and first published in Punch. The poppy became a symbol if, of a USA American organization helping American soldiers. And in 1921, that's a hundred years ago, the first poppy appeal was uh, set up by the British Royal Legion. £106,000 was raised through the sale of red silk poppies. And that was used to help soldiers find jobs and houses after World War I. A year later, Major George Housen set up a poppy factory that gave jobs to disabled soldiers and that poppy factory in Ashford in Kent makes millions of poppies each year. So time to reflect. The poppy has become such an important symbol of remembrance and hope. It's worn by millions of people across the world at this time. And it reminds us of the poppies that grew on those uh, battlefields where soldiers lost their lives. And it's a symbol of hope because it was a beautiful flower that grew quickly after that dreadful war. And a reminder maybe that good things can happen after or even at the same time as really bad things. Let's uh, join together in this prayer. If you want to agree with me, you can say Amen at the end. 
Dear God, we know that Remembrance Day is the day we set aside to think of those who died in war. We're thankful for the relative peace that we've enjoyed in the UK in the years after World War II, up until now. We pray for peace in places around the world that are at war now. Help us all to learn the lessons from the actions of the past and to change the bad and to repeat that which is good. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for your respect for that uh, remembrance uh, assembly. And I do hope you'll be able to join us um, on Sunday as we uh, march and commemorate all those who died in the wars. But on Thursday, we will uh, have time to remember as well, because it was at the 11th hour on the 11th of November that that war stopped. So we look at our child of the week and uh, we celebrate now those who have been shining their light. Thinking particularly of Frankie in Miss Berman's class and Matthew in Miss Marston's class. Well done. In year two, Miss, Le Miss um, Franklin has chosen Brianna and Miss Jakes and Miss Walker have chosen Ellie. In year three, Mason is child of the week for Mrs. Epps and Miss Poole, and Henry is child of the week for Miss Cross. Moving into year four, Miss Lefebvre has chosen Ivy, and Mr. Wright has chosen Henry. Leon is the child of the week for Miss Ladonu, and Leo is child of the week for Mr. Boyer. And finally, in year six, William has been chosen by Miss Greenhill and Callum has chosen, been chosen by Mr Nile. A big well done to all of you for shining your light brightly. And so we finish our child, our child of the Week Assembly, our commemoration of remembrance uh, with our blessing. Go in the light and the peace of Jesus, in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>